Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra. I'm gonna take you through this full body, deep stretch, flexibility flow. This is an intermediate practice and I won't be using any props, none are required. And this is just a great class to do if you wanna really stretch from head to toe and also increase your mobility and flexibility overall, especially in your hips, through your hamstrings, as well as along your spine. So let's begin lying down on our bellies. And we'll start just with a length uh, quad stretch to open up through the front of our thighs. So I like to do this by keeping my forehead down on my left forearm. With your feet about hip width distance apart, you can start to bend into your right knee. Notice how sometimes when we do this, we kind of rotate out. Sometimes our knee opens up. Try to keep everything hip width distance apart and you can reach back with your right hand just to pull your heel in towards your glute. And you can relax your head. See if you can push into your pubic bone a little bit and lengthen your tailbone as if you're flattening out your lower back. This will really help you feel the sensation from your right hip flexors all the way down into your right knee. And some sensation in the knee is not a bad thing. So we do have, you know, some connective tissues there. So a gentle stretching sensation at the top of the knee is fine. Just make sure it's not painful. So we should never feel any pain. Take one more big breath here and very carefully release. And we'll just go switch to the other side. So you can bring your forehead onto your right forearm, reach back with your left hand. Again, make sure you're not wobbling and getting your ankles side to side. I'm really trying to align my heel directly over the middle of my glute as I pull it in. And same thing, you're pressing pubic bone into the floor, flattening out through your lower back, really isolating the stretch so that there's no compression and no pinching in your lumbar spine. This can be such an area of tightness for many of us. Squeeze in a little more. And very carefully release and just take a little sphinx pose. Opening through your mid and upper back. So again, that same feeling of pushing into the pubic bone, lengthening tailbone towards the heels so that this back bend is primarily occurring kind of like at the middle of your spine all the way up, rolling your shoulders back and like you're pulling your heart forward while someone is pulling back on your shoulders. So lots of expansion here. And lay onto your belly once more. And now this time you can bring both hands kind of like one on top of each other and you can just rest your forehead down. You can widen your knees so they're a little bit off the mat and just take a few windshield wiper motions, dropping your ankles from side to side. And you might notice that dropping one side feels a little bit more natural or a little bit easier. Maybe one side has a little bit more tension and stiffness. And if you'd like, you can take a belly butterfly. Probably in the top five poses, I find to be just the hardest for my body and the way that my hips are made. For some of you, maybe at home, the feet are touching the floor, this feels easy. A lot of this just has to do with your natural anatomy and how your bones are created and how they stack. So just a few breaths here, big inner thigh stretch. And go ahead and straighten your legs. Start to lift yourself back up. And we're gonna press back into a wide like a child's pose. Big toes together, knees apart. Let's add a twist here. You're gonna thread your left arm underneath you, getting your shoulder as far over as you can. 
and then you can just push your right fingertips into the floor to pull your right shoulder back so twist through our thoracic spine while melting the hips down towards the heels And let's release, we'll switch sides so you can stay in child's pose, but you're gonna thread your right arm underneath you as far as it'll go. Lower your head to the floor, come up onto your left fingertips and push into the ground to twist a little bit deeper. Try to maintain slow, steady breaths in and out through your nose as we practice together. Releasing, coming back through to center, let's find our first downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Plant your hands shoulder width distance apart before you lift your hips up and back. And go ahead and bend your left knee. Keep your right leg straight and push into that right heel. Try to get it as close to the mat as you can. At the same time, you're curling your tailbone up towards the sky to really lengthen through our hamstrings. And go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Straighten your left leg, bend your right knee, lift your tailbone up even higher, push your chest even further. Come back to a neutral downward dog and we'll walk our feet forward to the top of the mat. Varying our forward fold a little bit here. So bend both knees just so you can come up onto your fingertips and you're gonna cross your right foot behind your left and you can kind of roll to the outer edge of that foot. Walk your hands over towards the left side of your mat and see if you can keep your left knee bent but straighten that right leg. And you should feel this pretty intensely down the IT band. You might not be able to straighten that right leg if it stays bent, that's fine. Just a different way of getting into our hamstrings, stretching at the back of the knee. And let's release, we'll do the same thing other side. This time cross your left foot behind your right. Walk your fingers and your hands over to the right. Keep that right knee bent, but straighten your left leg as much as you can. Coming back through to center. Widen your feet, bring your heels in, toes out, malasana. Drop down into your squat here. You can use your elbows to press your knees open a little bit wider. Press your shoulders down. And let's find our downward dog once more. Plant your palms, step your feet back. All right, from here, we're gonna stretch and reach our right leg all the way up as high as it'll go. Take a big inhale here as you reach and then bend into both knees. See if you can bring your ankle, right ankle behind the left one and then press and lift it all the way back up. We'll do that a few times. Bend into both knees so your left knee is hovering off the floor, almost like a balancing tabletop pose and then press and lift three like a dog. Three more. Exhale and inhale, stretch. Exhale, table. Inhale, open up. Last one, exhale and inhale. From here, let's step our right foot forward in between our palms to the top of the mat. Walk your hands a couple inches forward past your mat and go ahead, find your standing splits as you reach and lift that left leg up as high as it'll go. Very similar to what we just did in our three-legged dog, you're gonna inhale here, and as you exhale, bend into both knees, bring your left ankle behind your right. Inhale, stretch it up even higher. Exhale, make a tiny little ball. Inhale, stretch and lift. Exhale, squeeze it in. Last one, inhale, open. Now go ahead and drop your left foot back behind you with your left foot turned out at about a 45 degree angle for your pyramid pose, fold in. Hmm. 
Try to square your hips to the top of the mat. And you'll need to wiggle that back foot further back behind you and widen your stance. So bring your right foot more towards the outer edge of your mat with both hands to the inside of that right leg. For this lizard pose stretch, I like to rock a little back and forth, keep some buoyancy in your hips. We're trying to melt them down. And let's bring our left knee down to the mat. Maybe add some padding if you'd like. You can also integrate a quad stretch, reaching back with your right hand, pulling your left knee in towards you. <sighs> Big breath in, carefully release, facing forward again, find your downward facing dog, and maybe you choose to stay here, or you can take your flow from plank, chaturanga, cobra, or upward facing dog, and we meet, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. Now let's repeat the sequence on the second side, stretch your left leg up as high as it'll go, and then bend into both knees, bring your left ankle behind your right, hover your right knee off the mat. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, hovering table. Inhale, stretch it up and back. Exhale, lower. Inhale, reach, we'll take one more here. Lower down, stretch it up as high as it can possibly go. And then step your left foot in between your palms to the top of the mat. Walk your hands further out in front of you. Find your standing splits as you reach your right leg up again, squeezing it up as high as it can go. Bend into both knees. Bring your right ankle behind your left. Inhale, standing splits. Exhale, squeeze it down. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Last one here. Exhale. Standing splits, reach through your toes, and then just drop your right foot back behind you, just a couple feet. Turn those right toes out at a 45 degree angle, and fold over that left leg. Pyramid pose, Parjvottanasana. Squaring off the hips. We'll find our way into our lizard pose. So you can bend into your front knee, slide that back right foot a little bit more and widen your stance so that you have enough space to put both hands to the insides of that left thigh. And just start with this first variation of letting our hips drop, rolling our shoulders back, maybe rocking a little bit back and forth. Just checking in to see how the hips are doing and if you'd like to go further into this one, then your right knee comes down to the floor and maybe you reach back with your left hand to pull that heel in towards you. Try to melt your hips down a little more. Carefully release, downward facing dog. Stretch it out and take your flow. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's walk our feet forward to the top of the mat for your traditional ragdoll fold. You can have your feet a little bit wider, your knees a little bit bent, maybe hold onto your elbows and sway a little side to side. Relax your facial muscles. Getting a full body stretch from the back of the legs all the way down the spine. And you can release your hands down to the mat, bend your knees a little bit more, push into your heels to come all the way up into your mountain pose. Standing tall at the top of the mat. Okay, so from here, with your feet hip width distance apart, we're gonna come into our standing pigeon pose. So you need to lean on your left leg and you're just gonna cross your right ankle over the top of your left knee. 
flex that right foot and then start to bend into that supporting leg. Focus on sending your hips back and reaching your chest forward until you get that nice opening into your right glute and right hip. You can choose to keep your hands at your heart or you can go a little deeper into it by lowering your fingertips to the floor. So this will give you a bigger stretch, but it will also make it a little easier to balance. If you had lowered all the way down, use core strength to come up with balance, hands at the heart, right away coming into Natta Rajasana, our dancer's pose, hold on to the inside of your right foot with your right hand keep your legs hip width distance apart don't let your right knee splay open and start to kick the foot into the palm reaching your left arm up try to keep your hips squared as much as possible here not dipping our chest but staying up tall and come all the way back shake it out bring your feet a little bit wider than your hips you can bend your knees a little bit here and as you fold grab a hold of your two big toes with your peace fingers inhale halfway lift flat back exhale bend your elbows away from one another as you fold you can definitely have your knees bent here if straight legs is a little bit too much right now <sighs> release the hold of the toes bend your knees push into your heels come all the way back up and let's do the same thing on the other side so feet hip width distance apart start with your standing pigeon pose first you're going to cross left ankle over the top of your right knee. I'm trying to press that left thigh down. As I'm bending through my supporting leg, my weight in my hips is going back and my chest is leaning forward. Maybe I stay up nice and tall or I can fold and bring the fingertips down to the mat. Try not to let any tension creep up in your neck, shoulders, jaw as you do this. We're just opening through our left hip. And let's start to come back up. Use your gaze to help you with balance. Into our dancer's pose, reach that left foot back, grab a hold of the inside of your left foot with your left hand. Keep your knees hip width distance apart. Start to push the foot into the palm, kicking it back as you reach forward with your right arm. And we're looking to feel a stretch into our left shoulder here as well. So keeping our chest lifted. Uh, coming all the way back up, release, shake it out, find that same stance with your feet a little wider, a little bend in your knees to fold. This time, if you'd like, you can step onto your palms, palms facing up. And this can be a nice way to just wiggle your toes and massage your wrists. Knees can be bent or straight as you fold, still kind of bending the elbows away from one another. But truthfully, I can't get much further than this. So my elbows don't really need to bend. I'm just feeling that stretch behind your legs. Let's release. Instead of coming back up, we're going to lower all the way down. And let's open into a straddle, our wide-legged fold. So winding through your legs, we're going to move into a side bend first. Reach your left arm up and over. Try to push your left hip down. It is hard to keep both sit bones on the mat, but as much as possible, try to keep it there. Focusing mostly on your waist here in this pose. Let's 
Let's find a side bend to the other side. Right arm reaches up and over. Push down into your right sit bone. Try not to let your hip lift off the ground. Lifting back up, fold over towards your right knee and shin this time. And lifting up, fold towards left knee and left shin. And finally, let's fold through to center. Rise on up. And we'll lower onto our bellies again, just like how we were at the beginning of class, but this time we're gonna do a laying chest opener. So giving our lower body a bit of a break and stretching into our pectorals, shoulders, and down the arm. So bend your right elbow at a 90 degree angle with your palm flat to the floor. My elbow is just a little bit higher than my shoulder. I'm gonna roll onto my right hip, right ear, right shoulder. Push your left hand into the floor. Maybe bring your left hand to your low back. You can also step your left leg back behind you. Five breaths here. And let's release. We'll do the same thing to the other side. Straighten your legs. This time, bring your left arm out. Palm is facing down. Bending at your elbow. Roll over to the left. And maybe just push your right hand into the floor. Or bring your right hand to your lower back. Maybe step your right foot back behind you. And let's release. Just go ahead and flip over onto your back. Happy baby pose, Ananda Balasana. Holding onto your toes with your peace fingers. Using your elbows to push your knees wider. Now lower your feet to the edges of the mat, so a little wider than your hips, and you're gonna flex your feet so that only your heels are touching. And now go ahead and drop both knees and thighs over to the left. Maybe you stay here. If you'd like, you can also cross your left ankle over the top of your right knee to stretch further down, and you can reach your right arm up overhead. I'm just bringing my left hand on my belly so I can focus on taking slower, deeper breaths. And let's uncross. We'll go right away to the other side. Make sure your feet are still wide. You're dropping over to the right, maybe crossing right ankle over the top of your left knee and extending your left arm up overhead.
breathing deeply. On cross, come back through to center and we'll unwind coming into Shavasana. Take up space. <sighs> Relax your arms by your sides, palms facing up. And feel the effects of this practice on your body. Maybe just noticing where you feel this the most. Letting go of any judgments. Letting go of our expectations. Instead, shifting to a space of gratitude and contentment. about one more minute here. Let's reawaken. Big breath to stretch your arms up overhead, lengthening everything out. And we can roll to one side. Let's meet in Sukhasana or easy pose. Lifting up tall. Please join your palms together at the front of your heart. We'll close this practice with one chant of Om. Inhale to chant, big breath in. Thank you so very much for doing this flexibility deep stretch practice with me. I hope you feel all loose and limber and just a lot more comfortable in your body overall. Leave me a comment before you go. Please subscribe and I hope to practice again with you very soon.